Hey guys, Emily V here for another video. Um, this one, I wanted to tell you guys a little bit of a story because I know I've been giving everybody surgery updates like as I've been recovering from gender, whatchamacallit surgery, what are they calling it these days? SRS, GRS, gender affirmation surgery, reconstructive this and whatever. Um, yeah, so I, I don't... I like gender affirmation surgery personally, but I, I don't like that the acronym for it is GAS. That doesn't sound good. Okay, so what was it like having gender affirmation surgery? So I showed up at the clinic uh, the day of my surgery um, and I was brought there by a taxi that had been arranged by the government as part of this a uh, big surgery package that they approved me for and the taxi driver is like oh the entrance to the clinic's over there and he's familiar with it I guess like they've briefed him on what I'm there for already like everyone around me it feels like I'm on like uh, the Truman Show or something because like everywhere uh, they have me go all the people that I come in contact with are like all in on this like I guess because they want like trans friendly people running the different services like they don't want you picked up in a taxi and let's say like you're a visibly trans person and then you get like some fucking uh, jerk from another province and he doesn't speak the same language as you because I'm in Quebec I don't speak French I know I should I'm sorry um, but I don't speak French and you don't want to be like ah you motherfucker we don't like the trans people like get the fuck out of here like we we don't want that, right? Like, uh, that wouldn't be good. So, um, I guess they've like talked to the uh the innkeeper, not innkeeper. This isn't World of Warcraft. Uh, what do you call someone who runs a uh like a bed and breakfast? Uh, uh, an innkeeper. I don't. I guess an innkeeper. So, anyways, I talked to the innkeeper and set my hearthstone there, and um she already knew what was going on too like everyone I came in contact with knew what I was here for and would give me instructions to get me to the next person who also knew so finally this chain of uh, paid actors uh, got me to the clinic and uh, I go in and I, they give me a whole bunch of paperwork like immediately and I have to fill out questionnaires and like sign non-disclosure agreements and like uh, uh, sign things that are like waivers like oh if something goes horribly wrong and we fuck you up uh, get the fuck out of here we're, we're not we don't have anything that you're not part go like you can't do anything basically uh, so that's lovely um, so I did all that and after I handed in the paperwork, they immediately gave me this like big cup of pills to take, uh, and <laughs> um, they gave me this ridiculous, this ridiculous little little cup to swallow the pills with. <laughs> Like, like if you ever go to like a fast food place, like a chip wagon or something, and they give you French fries, and there's like ketchup in this little paper, little tiny paper cup, like they give me that with a little bit of water, and they're like, here, take these like fourteen pills, please. And uh, I don't know if like that's normal that like everyone can just swallow pills without water but I can't do that like I, I was like I'm gonna need three of those cups of water for each pill that you've given me please and and the nurse was just not happy with me at all um she was like not wanting to do that she didn't give me any water so she left the room and I snuck into the bathroom with my little cup I took it with me and I whoosh, 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 like for fucking 20 times I did that I don't know why I didn't just like put my head under the sink or cut my hands or something in retrospect but I used my little cup and I, I took all the pills and um, it's my understanding that the pills were uh, two things there was some like basic painkillers uh, anti-inflammatories uh, and something to relax me so I just sat there on my hospital bed they gave me a room and I'm waiting and I'm waiting and an hour passes by and two hours passes by three hours passes by 
I'm still here just sitting, waiting. I'm like on my phone chatting and talking to my girlfriend and you know, just whatever. So finally they came and got me. The nurse came back and was like, okay, we're, we're ready for you now. Uh, and so she leads me through the clinic and like we go in this like elevator that you need like a key code or whatever. You have to like swipe a thing to unlock the elevator. And I'm like, oh shit, where, where are they taking me? Am I going like away? Like I'm like the Area 51 experiment or something. And I'm being like, am I going to be able to get out of here? <laughs> like I'm locked in now or what? Um, so we get off the elevator and then there's like more sets of locked doors and like always like they have to swipe the key card to get in and like beep beep and like the doors open and, like it's like crazy futuristic um i don't know if uh captain picard's waiting for me in another room or gonna go to the ready room or what's gonna happen so uh they take me to an a waiting room that's up in this locked secure area uh, that just has like a whole bunch of like nurses and stuff chatting and stuff and I'm just sitting there with like magazines on one side on the inside table and there's a box of Kleenex on the table and it's like some pleasant music in the background like I'm just like a, like I'm fucking waiting you know to see the dentist or something like no big deal uh, meanwhile I'm here in like this hospital gown in this air conditioned room like freezing to death and just I've been sitting around for hours kept waiting I don't know what's going on no one's telling me anything and I'm just sitting there um so I think I waited for like another 45 minutes after that uh just in that waiting room before anyone came to see me um so my surgeon comes into the waiting room and uh, says uh, hello to me and uh, starts uh, introducing himself asking you know how I'm feeling am I nervous or blah 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 do I have any questions I didn't have any questions at the time I was like super scared anyways there's no way I would have been able to think of something intelligent to say um, so he says like okay great and he wants to go into the uh, some examination room in the meantime to you know get get acquainted with uh, the situation so before the surgery so we do that and then he sends me back to the waiting room and then he goes to get ready and I'm waiting more and that's fun and then maybe about half an hour after that uh, they come back for me and this time it's the anesthesiologist and he takes me down some more hallways oh boy oh boy it's getting real now this is starting to get a little freaking scary this just doesn't seem like this could be real I don't really think so um, so yeah that's fun and then we go through this last set of like steel shiny doors and here we are in this gigantic surgery room it is like from the movies or something it's like just this big room with these big surgical lights over top and just this one table in the middle and there's like there's like eight people in there there's like fucking eight people in this room and they all have something to do and um so they take me to the the bed the whatever you the table the table the surgical table whatever I don't know medical things um, and they say that they're going to need to do the epidural first now I knew that an epidural involved uh, jamming a needle into your spine to uh, you know uh, what's the word anesthetize the uh, the point below the injection so like you know, if it's at some point in your spine, then everything below that will be completely, like, you won't feel anything. Um, and I apologize for not having the most, like, scientific terms to to talk about this, because I, I honestly don't, I just don't know. Um, so I thought, like, okay, so they put a needle in, and probably you wait a bit, and then you can't feel anything. Great. Cool. I had years to train for this, to prepare for this. But this is this is gonna be a big deal, and it's not gonna be fun. It's not gonna be a nice experience. 
what's getting the epidural going to be like. And I have to tell you, it was not fun. The first thing they did is have me sit up. So I'm lying down and they have me sit up uh, in, in the, on the table, I guess we're calling it, on the surgical table. And then an anesthesiologist uh, comes up to me and stands opposite me. And uh, he tells me to uh, like embrace against him and lean forward. And so I do that. And then they put this, what feels like a gigantic freaking needle in my spine. And I was like, okay, okay, I can, I can deal with this. And now he's going to put the injection in and then take it out and we're done. Right? No, no, no. The epidural involved like what felt like 15 minutes of fucking putting that needle in and putting it out over and over again in more ways than than I could imagine possible um so yeah again fun times it was the most horrible fucking thing of the whole the whole story the whole story that was the worst freaking part because it lasted forever and it hurt so much and I felt every time the needle slid in and slid out in my spine at different angles it was absolutely the worst and I was just crying and I was like holding on to the nurse and I was just hugging him uh, and and just crying and crying and oh my god it felt like it was never going to end um, so there was that and so then after that was over I laid back down and then they said they were going to give me something to calm me down and relax me uh, which is good I, I, I kind of needed that to be honest that was uh, given to me via gas so they put the mask over my face and they tell me to breathe deeply and normally so I did that and I have to tell you that breathing into that mask is the very last thing that I can remember until I was in the recovery room and uh, the recovery room is a place where they put you after you've had your surgery so that you can come back and uh, you know not that wait till the uh, anesthesia wears off wait till you are aware of what's going on and able to communicate normally um, and I don't know how long I was there for um, the only, like the m most recent thing I remember from that is like the nurse coming to me and being like okay you're almost ready to leave that that might be a disappointing story but uh, at the same time I think it's a really good thing if like the worst part of the whole experience of having such a major surgery if the worst part is like getting the the thing to get rid of your pain the anesthesia um, that's not so bad right like everyone is always so scared of the surgery they're like oh what if it goes wrong or what if uh, something bad happens or what if it doesn't turn out right or oh it's gonna be so painful and it's gonna be so horrible um, it's not it's not at all you're you're not gonna know about the surgery you're gonna go in there and be scared and you're gonna come out and be done uh, that's it it was it was really 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 easy in that regard like if I had known that it would be such like a painless and smooth experience I it would have saved me so much grief over the years like the last three years just being like oh it's gonna be so scary and having so much anxiety over it and like having so many fears like there was no need to be that afraid it was it could have been replaced with excitement and uh, anticipation and you know more positive feelings if only I had known like yeah the recovery is is honestly the worst part like the worst parts of of from before having the surgery to right now at this moment in time when I'm recording this video like the worst parts are still like are things that are happening now like the dilations and aftercare stuff that you have to do it, it's 
so, so, so much worse than the entire experience of going to Montreal, staying there for two weeks, and, you know, being in the hospital for all this time, and all of that, like, the the bad times are now, not not back then, like, that was a fucking smooth ride, and, um, the, the surgeon was amazing, he did fantastic work, I couldn't possibly be happier with, with the results that I've had, um, and all of the nurses and the staff at both the clinic and at the recovery home that is part of the clinic that I stayed at for two weeks after the surgery, everyone was just so nice and so helpful and like they take so good care of you. Like I've never been so pampered in my life and felt like safe and like, you know, nothing's gonna go wrong. Like everything's gonna be okay because someone's taking care of me and someone's gonna answer my questions if I have any, if I need something, someone's always gonna be there for me. And that was a freaking amazing feeling. Um, once you get sent home, it's like you're on your own. No one's, no one's there to help you anymore. And that kind of sucks. Um, so those of you who are thinking about having the surgery or a similar surgery, um, those of you who are going to have it and have it upcoming, um, hopefully you'll take something from this and, and at least have some external reassurance that it's not something to be afraid of. It's like whatever your perspective is on your fear, like if you're afraid of the results, well, like the surgery has come a very long way, like even in the last 10 years, like it's a world different. Um, and they don't they don't fuck this shit up they don't they do really fucking good work and i don't just mean my surgeon i i mean the surgeons in the united states the surgeons in other countries all over the world they are they're not idiots they they know what the fuck they're doing and they make really really good results um you don't need to worry and and i've been just like blown away like time after time at how there is so little difference between this surgically created vagina and like that of of a cis of a cis vagina there's the things that you would be like oh well yeah i'm sure it's it's gonna look good but there's always gonna be this thing because just of how it's made it's gonna be a little different because of this or that well, I guess I was wrong. I guess it's just fucking magic or witchcraft or something because I don't know how the fuck, I don't know how the fuck they made that out of what parts they had to work with. Like, that doesn't make sense. Like, I've watched the videos on how they do it and stuff and you'd be like, huh, well, shouldn't the inside of a trans vagina be made of, like, skin because it's inverted tissue from the penis? So, like, it would be skin, right? Just, like if uh, you touch uh, someone's penis, then that's what it should be like on the inside of a trans vagina, right? Wrong, apparently not. Apparently it's exactly like the fucking inside of a cis girl's vagina. I don't, f f f what are they doing? I don't know what they're doing, but like, I, I, I don't know. It must be some sort of sorcery, magic, witchcraft, voodoo. I don't know. Hopefully, if not the most exciting story because I'm not going to be like oh and I remember I remember seeing a glimpse I opened my eye and I I saw the blade digging into my skin or like I don't have any dramatic stories for you but hopefully at least it's something positive something good something um to lessen lessen the worry and lessen the anxiety so uh thanks guys for watching and um I'll see you all real soon